Hello, Washington Primary boys and girls. I am Jessica Taylor. I am your PTA president, and I am Dante Valentine's mama. Today, I will read you Jimmy. It is Jimi Hendrix Sounds Like a Rainbow, a story of the young Jimi Hendrix. It's illustrated by Javaka Steptoe and written by Gary Guglio. Seattle, Washington, 1956. Electricity ripped through the air. A lightning flash lit up the room. Thunder rocked the house. Jimmy's hand jumped and a rainbow of colored pencils went tumbling to the floor. Outside rain began trickling off the roof and plinking into the metal gutter. Drops bounced onto the windowsill. A breeze ripped the glass chimes on the floor. For a moment, Jimmy thought he heard a woman's name being blown in the wind. Jimmy grabbed his one string ukulele. He could play only simple tunes, but now he had a new idea. He pulled the string and let it snap back, tapping gently with his fingers up and down on the neck to get just the right notes over and over until he could play the sound of raindrops singing as they fell. After the storm, Jimmy stepped out onto the porch of the boarding house where he and his father lived. Down the street, a child was laughing, squealing like a clarinet on one of those one of dad's big band records. A truck engine backfired, pounding like a bass drum as a neighbor's rake played snare against the sidewalk. A dog yowled, a siren wailed in the distance, and a bird rattled off a string of high, wild notes. The sounds of life were calling out and Jimi Hendrix wanted to answer them. and potato chip waved from across the street. They loved Jimmy's drawings, the funny stories he told, and the way he could imitate guitars and trumpets with his mouth and hands. And they never teased him about his worn out clothes and wild hair, the way some kids did, or because he was always moving from one part of town to the other when his dad was out of work. They were the three musketeers, best friends for life. Down at the record store, the boys checked out the top 10 hits each week. Crazy about music, they would chatter for hours about the latest rock and roll songs. Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, B.B. King. The airwaves were sizzling with excitement. New sounds and rhythms. Sometimes Jimmy and his friends bicycled down to the lake, a magical place of deep green leaves and dark purple shadows. They'd throw rocks into the water, listening to them plop and gurgle as they sank. All around, there were birds singing, bees buzzing, and breezes whistling through the trees. Above the clouds, airplane engines droned and whirled. With every sound, a color glowed in Jimmy's mind. Blue was the wish of the cool water splashing over rocks. Orange and red, the clacking of a campfire. Green, the rustle of a thousand leaves. At home, Jimmy drew and painted for hours. He filled pages with sleek, finned spaceships. Knights on horseback, fierce Indian chiefs, and castles in the clouds. A teacher even let him cover the blackboard once with chalk drawings of Mexico in bold blazing yellows, purples, and reds. Jimmy's imagination was on fire, and a tune was always playing in his head. At night, he listened to Dad croon along with gospel, jazz, or blues records on the old phonograph, a song by Muddy Waters with its 
wailing guitar and harmonica set off fireworks in his mind. He wondered, could a person use music like chalks and colored pencils? Could someone paint pictures with sound? Sweeping up his room one day, Jimmy stopped and held the broom in his arms. He strummed the bristles, sliding his fingers back and forth along the wooden handle. Was this what it was like to feel like to hold a real guitar, to swing it up and down, to make music while you sang? On the radio, Everless Presley's hit Hound Dog shook the speakers. Elvis was the king, twisting and shouting to the beat of rock and roll. Jimmy strummed the broom again. Pieces of straw went flying into the air as he wiggled his hips like Elvis and sang his heart out for an imaginary audience of screaming fans. Sitting on the porch one night, Jimmy watched as the landlady's son cradled a worn wooden guitar in his lap and began to sing. The man's voice was dark and smooth like velvet. The blues, they is a lonely sound, like the whistle of a train, full of tender feelings and pouring down like rain. Notes spun from the strings, flickering in the air like fireflies. Jimmy's eyes shone. He could feel the music tingling in his fingertips. When the landlady's son offered to sell his guitar for $5, Jimmy begged daddy to buy it. Now he had an instrument of his own. Night after night, he'd sit alone in his room, plunk, plunk, plunking along for hours. On a small transistor radio, Jimmy tuned in his favorite songs and learned them note for note. From dad's old blues records, he soaked up the gritty sounds of guitar masters, Lightning Hopkins and Howlin' Wolf. Before long, Jimmy could play guitar while Potato Chip sang or jam with Terry as his fingers ticked the keys of an old piano in the basement. Every note and every chord was like a new color for Jimmy. He had a rainbow of sounds at his fingertip and he wanted to paint the world with them. Soon, Jimmy played well enough to join a local band, but when he first performed on stage, the screaming saxophone, pounding drums, and rocking piano drowned out his old wooden guitar. He felt invisible. He wanted to be heard. He needed a louder guitar, an electric guitar. Money was tight, but Dad could see what music meant to his son. It may have been the cheapest model, but to Jimmy, his new white Supro Ozark guitar was pure gold. And now he could plug into an amplifier, turn up the volume, and hold his own in the band. With the flick of a switch, Jimmy's life was electrified. Practicing at a friend's house one day, Jimmy heard the amplifier making strange and eerie sounds. Out of the speaker came buzzes and whistles, fuzzy hissing and raspy humming. Strumming the guitar made the noises shift and change. By turning knobs and stretching guitar strings, Jimmy found that he could play with different sounds. He ran his fingers up and down the neck, tapping and scraping, plucking, sliding and picking. Then a smile flashed across his face. Suddenly, the room filled with a rocket roar, crashing waves, the buzz of swarming bees. Jimmy was finally painting with sound. His playing became bold as lightning, wild as the waves, free as the wind, through the trees. Dressed in the colors of the rainbow, he played for audiences far and wide, joining fiery sounds with tender feelings and paintings the words with his songs.
Don't let nobody turn you off from your own thoughts and dreams. Jimi Hendrix. Born in 1942, James Marshall Hendrix grew up in Seattle, Washington, the perfect place for a boy whose veins flowed with the blood of Cherokee Indians, African slaves, and white Europeans. People of all colors lived in the Rainbow City then, and Jimmy learned lessons of tolerance that there that lent to a universal quality of his music later on. At 18, Jimmy joined the Army's 101st Airborne Division and became a paratrooper. After his discharge, he toured the country from 1962 to 1966 as a backup guitarist, working with the Motown and rhythm and blues performers like Little Richard, Sam Cooke, and the Isley Brothers. He even met his two musical heroes, Muddy Waters and B.B. King. In the fall of 1966, music manager Chas Chandler took Jimmy to England. There, he changed the spelling of his name and formed the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Touring Europe with his new band, Jimmy created a sensation. His thrilling stage moves and explosive guitar playing led reporters to name him the Wild Man of Borneo and the Black Elvis. The racial makeup of the experience was also unique at the time. A three-person band with a white drummer, a white bass player, and a lead black guitarist. When the band made their American debut at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967, Jimmy set fire to his guitar on stage and became a legend overnight. And that is Jimmy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day.